Today we're taking a look at some massive trans wins, Donald Trump getting kicked off the presidential ballot, the nightmare flight that will haunt me as I travel later this month, and more on this episode of Huge News. I'm your host, Ty Turner, and the first huge news is huge news. This show, here with the inside scoop, is me. What are you doing? I'm making a new show called Huge News. All right. And there you have it. Up next, we've got some huge news on the newly established Goose Troop. Now, you probably haven't heard of this because I made it up. After over a decade on YouTube, I've finally found a name for my online community, and that is the Goose Troop. So welcome to the gaggle. We're named after the chaos bird whose spirit we all strive to embody. And in memory of my dog, Goose. She's not dead, but the clock is always ticking. Subscribe to join the Goose Troop today, and one like equals one heart. And now for some huge trans news. It's good news. It's really good stuff, folks. You're going to love it. We had some huge trans wins this last year. Aaron Reed of Aaron in the Morning has made an awesome list compiling all of these trans victories, and it is just an absolute joy to scroll through. So let's look at that. Here are all of the biggest victories for transgender people in 2023. We got court victories. Iowa. Don't say gay law. Book ban blocked in court. Let's can go. Florida drag ban blocked. Montana gender affirming care ban blocked. Idaho gender affirming care ban blocked. It's good. It's good stuff. Damn, we got a lot of those. Arkansas, that's where I live. Hopefully not for long though. Arkansas trans care ban blocked. Boom. It's good news. It's huge news, bro legislative and policy victories. 15 states pass shield laws protecting trans care. Thank you. Arkansas bathroom ban changed the last minute to not ban trans people from bathrooms. Thank you on behalf of myself personally. This is a thing that literally affects my life. <laughs> Election victories. 12 out of 13 Moms for Liberty candidates in Iowa lost all running on anti-trans platforms let's go iowa they said no thanks we don't need that we're like moms for dumb assery more like mama mia here we go again <laughs> more like mom's spaghetti because <laughs> i bet their uh, palms were real sweaty after all those losses Danica Rome elected to the Senate as first trans woman senator in Virginia. It's huge news. Moms for Liberty suffers massive nationwide defeat in elections with 73% of candidates losing. Y'all put the L in Liberty, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. California school district successfully launches recall of anti-trans school board member. <laughs> Boom. Recalled. Get out of here. Studies and polls, 76% say trans care should be decided by patients and doctors, not politicians and landmark poll. That, I'm going to say it, that's huge. 76%. So you know, the hundreds of anti-trans healthcare bills that have been created and promoted this year, 76% of Americans say, nah, we don't need that. We don't want it. We don't need it. Next. That's huge. First ever RCT shows trans care lowers self unalivality. That's what we've been saying. 21 state AGs release reports showing no negative incidents from trans people in bathrooms as we've been new. Swedish study shows no social contagion. As we have been saying, oh, in defense against rapid onset gender dysphoria, a made-up phenomenon where being transgender is just fake, but also somehow contagious. You can't even call it fake science because it's like not even science at all. It's just somebody polled, they interviewed a group of parents that were on an anti-trans form. All these parents who have trans kids and are going to this form, it's really f***ed up, to see how to forcefully detransition their trans kids. It was literally a support group for transphobic parents of trans kids. And this study on rapid onset gender dysphoria only polled that group of people. And they came to the conclusion that being trans is fake and it's also something you just decide to do because all the cool kids are doing it. So that's why people are trans. <laughs> Shocking that that group of people would come to that conclusion. But oh my God, that study gained so much notoriety by TERFs and people who uh, you know don't actually care about science and just want to push an agenda. So we have been hearing about the social contagion 
of being transgender for many years now. And it's lovely to see that we now have our own study we can point to because pointing to the fact that that study was just made up bullshit, absolutely falsified, not even remotely scientific whatsoever, uh, wasn't good enough for them. Now there's this... We love to see it. Despite claims of exploding rates of being trans and rapid social contagion, a new Swedish study seems to hint that we have reached an equilibrium of gender transitions. So now here we see it. It's exploding around like 2015, 2014 to 2016. Huge increases there. But now it's leveling off. And this is why we always show the history of left-handedness chart, because the same thing happened back when being left-handed was discouraged. They even forced left-handed people to write with their right hands. But then once it was accepted, oh, what do you know? The rate of being left-handed explodes, but then it evens out because guess what? Those people would have always been left-handed the same way that during these years, you know, 2014 to 2016, that is when, you know, the time between most people not even knowing what the word transgender means to the concept of being trans becoming a household, you know, well-known phenomenon. I mean, 2014 is when I went from having 10K to 100K subscribers and documented my one year on testosterone. So I think the pretty obvious explanation for the exploding rates of being trans during this time is that more people are becoming aware uh, that this was a thing that they could do. You know, this thing that I've been wanting to do my whole life that I've always felt, I don't just have to carry this around until I die. I can, I can transition and, you know, just live the way I want to. Neat. So fuck yeah. Oh, here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> She's got the history of left-handedness chart. All right. See, in the early 1900s, they wouldn't let you be left-handed, so it was real low. But then, oh my God, what's that? By 1960, it explodes, quadruple the amount of people are left-handed than they were before. Must be socially contagious. Oh wait, nope. That's just how many people are left-handed and would have been left-handed if we would have allowed them to be. Incredible. So this is awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad we're seeing this. So much good stuff here. Uh, definitely go check out that full list. Feels like a great inspirational way to start off the year and to start off the news. Huge news. Feels good. Feels good to win some. And boy, we won a lot. And now, wait, what's that? This just in, Huge News has a huge sponsor. Harry's. They've been my go-to shaving brand for years because they've consistently given me the highest quality shave at the most affordable price of any razor I've ever tried. Harry's Foaming Shave Gel with Aloe is perfect for my sensitive skin. And with their German-engineered five-blade razors and award-winning weighted handle, I get a close, clean shave every time. I've also been using their Redwood deodorant for a couple months now, and it has been a hit with the ladies. By that, of course, I mean my wife and my mom have both complimented me on it. And now, more than ever, it is easy and convenient to try Harry's and stay stocked up because Harry's products are available in stores like Target, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, and other grocery and drug stores. And that's especially convenient when I'm traveling because I can just pack the handle in my bag and know that I'll be able to get blades whenever I get to my destination. Harry's is now the official shaving brand of the Goose Troop. So check them out next time you're at the store and let me know what you pick up. Now, how about some more good news? Well, good for us because we get to point and laugh. Not so good for the idiots involved. You'll see why. In a segment we're calling Rip Bozo. <laughs> Our bozo today and every day is Donald Trump, who has officially been kicked off the ballot in two states. First, it was Colorado, now Maine. Challenges in 30 states have been filed and 19 are currently pending. Any state could be next because he violated the constitution of this, our United States of America, by inciting an insurrection in the nation's capitol building. And apparently that's what it takes to get this bozo off the ballot. And not even all the ballots. Just two of them so far. But we're working on it. Now, ultimately, it's going to be up to the Supreme Court to decide if these states can actually keep him off the ballot. And they're starting that process on February 8th. And they don't have much time to figure that out. So <laughs> primaries are coming up. So we're going to know pretty soon if... Uh, violating section three of amendment 14 of the constitution and inciting an insurrection among all the other fucking things he's done is actually enough to get trump off the ballot but a lot of folks seem to agree that it is so there you go trump you brought the circus to our nation's capital and now your little clown car is careening towards a cliff rip bozo i would love nothing more 
than to watch you drop. All right, the next huge news is just, it's something that I have to talk about. I can't not talk about this, all right? So you know when you take a flight and you're sitting there in the plane and you're looking around and you see the emergency exit door and your intrusive thoughts start creeping up and you think, what would happen if I pulled that open? (laughs) I'm not gonna do it. I don't wanna do it. But what if somebody did it? What if they didn't even have to do it? I mean, that's a that's a door right there. It's kind of wiggling around. You know, we're hitting turbulence. It's bouncing. What happens if that thing on its own? You know, I don't even have to pull it. What if it just flies off? And then all of a sudden, everyone starts to get sucked out of there. It's final destination in real life. You're holding on with everything you have. Your ears are blown out. And then you hear the flight attendant's voice being like, sir, sir. And you realize that she's been asking you if you want something to drink, but you've been so zoned out deep in your final destination fantasy uh, that you've been like blankly staring with your luck, probably right at her chest and you didn't even, and then you realize it and you're like, oh my God, no, just me. (laughs) All right. Well, (laughs) that fantasy, unfortunately became a reality for the passengers of this Alaska Airlines flight. Oh my God, this is so insane to me. (laughs) I'm sure most people watching this have heard about it, but like the story just keeps getting worse. So here's what happened. So the door plug on this flight pops off the plane when they're already in the air at 16,000 feet. The passengers say they heard a loud boom, sounded like a bomb going off. And then as you would expect, she starts to get sucked out of there. Now luckily nobody died. Nobody got hurt. Some people had their clothes torn off of them. The door plug was found. It fell down into a teacher's yard. (laughs) I can't imagine going out (laughs) into my front yard and being like, Oh, I would think that the aliens had visited me. I'd be like, this is huge. Roswell 2 is happening right now in my yard. (laughs) Get the news out here. Huge news. And there were a few phones that fell out. But yeah, they found one of the other phones to also be working. Totally intact, perfectly functional. And when this happened, there's like a checklist that the pilots have to go through and see like in this emergency situation, what do we need to do? So they go and they get the checklist, but... It gets sucked out of the door plane flight. <laughs> it's not- so then they just had to figure it out, made an emergency landing. They were able to make it back to the airport. No one got hurt. No one died. But I mean, obviously, everybody on that flight thought it was the end. It's insane. It is a nightmare turned reality. Like that is literally the shit that I picture happening every time I fly. So now they've been investigating this Boeing 737-9. Turns out this is a known and ongoing issue. The bolts for the door plugs or the brackets, some part of whatever is supposed to keep this exact thing from happening has been having ongoing issues with these planes. And last year, the manufacturer of the door plug was subject to a class action lawsuit that alleged widespread quality failures. There were also like warning lights and pressure issues with this plane that went ignored allegedly. So if I was on this flight, I'd be pissed. And now they've grounded all the Boeing 737-9s. And now I have a flight coming up in just a few short weeks that I will be absolutely scarred and traumatized for. But I'll tell you one thing, if I was on that flight, I'd be suing the shit out of every entity involved. I'd be getting that bag that final destination payout (laughs) that I rightfully deserve. So I hope the passengers get their justice because I'm sure that they are thoroughly f***ed up after going through that. And now to our field correspondent for the weather. I like drove for a really long time today, young Jesus adults, and I felt like we were about to be within a prayer circle. I thought we were about to get prayed for. And now we know that was the weather. Now for the last segment of the show, we're going to end it on an absolute banger with a segment I'm calling What in the Actual News? Nude man nabbed by police after cannonball plunge into giant aquarium at Bass Pro Shop in Alabama. Yup. Sounds about right. All of that checks out. A man crashed his car outside a Bass Pro Shop in Alabama, of course. That is the entrance you have to make for this situation stripped down to his birthday suit, and plunged into the giant aquarium inside the store, police said. (laughs) My man is brave. That water is not warm. Like, naked is such a bold choice. They got gars, they got snapping turtles, there's all sort of critters in there. Like, 
I, he's he's living the life I want him to be able to live. Free him. The 42-year-old Alabama man did a cannonball leap into the aquarium and then stood under the waterfall. <laughs> he left the water to yell at two officers. <laughs> then, then dove back into the aquarium. <laughs> Fuck yes, I love this guy. He probably wouldn't love me. I mean, I don't want to assume, but this the vibe. I'm going to actually, I'm going to choose to believe that he's an ally. The man eventually climbed over the side of the aquarium and fell to the concrete floor below. That's such a tall, oh my God, the wet splat. Police then apprehended him. Let him go. Release him. He faces several charges, including public lewdness, disorderly conduct, and criminal mischief. I mean, that was definitely mischief. That was by definition mischief, but criminal mischief, that's too harsh. Come on. Free my mans. He did nothing wrong. He's living the life we all want to live. He is free in a way you cannot possibly understand. This is someone who exists beyond the boundaries. And who are we to take that away from him? I love nude man nabbed by police after cannonball plunge into giant aquarium at Bass Pro Shop in Alabama. And I hope you did too, because that's huge news. Get in the gaggle, folks. Subscribe now to join the Goose Troop. Hey, I sure hope you like the show. Been working on it for a while, putting it all together. I just feel like there's always so much stuff that I want to talk about, and it is hard to produce a dedicated YouTube video about all this different stuff that's popping up. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do huge news, because <laughs> it's just a phrase that I think is hilarious, and I say it a lot. And let's just make it, you know, all the stuff that I feel like talking about, all the new stuff that I find interesting and relevant. I really enjoyed making this. It's fun. It's exciting to have a new project with the new year and i got all sorts of fun stuff planned this has been huge news i'm your host ty turner aka papa goose we'll see if it sticks signing off so have a wonderful day thank you and goodbye and stay huge <laughs> i'm keeping that <laughs>